In the first video, I said that linear algebra is concerned with linear transformations and vectors. And so far, we've just been talking about vectors. We're finally in a place where we can start discussing linear transformations. So linear transformation is an operator that turns one vector into another. And in the context of quantum mechanics, these linear transformations always take a vector in one vector space and turn it into another vector in the same vector space. Although in general, linear transformations can send vectors from one vector space into a different vector space. So an example of a linear transformation would be something like rotate a vector in the plane 90 degrees. So if this transformation were to act on the vector x, it would turn it into the vector y, assuming that this rotation happens counterclockwise. Now we usually don't denote linear transformations by writing out what they do, like rotate 90. Instead, linear transformations are represented as capital letters with hats on them to distinguish them from something like a number. So having the linear operator t act on the vector a would be expressed like this. And we'll assume that it produces some new vector b. So these things are called transformations because they transform one vector into another vector. They're called linear because they satisfy the property that when a linear transformation operates on a linear combination of two vectors, it's the same thing as that linear transformation acting on each vector individually. So let's say we have a linear combination of two arbitrary vectors, a and b, with arbitrary coefficients, the numbers a and b. And we act on this linear combination with the transformation t. Well, that's the same thing as having this transformation t act on the vector a and multiplying the result by the number a, plus having this transformation act on the vector b and multiplying the result by the number b. That's why these are called linear, because they obey this principle of linearity. So how do we specify a linear transformation if we don't want to write out what that transformation does? Well, it turns out that we can just specify what this linear transformation does to the basis vectors of a space. So let's say we have a basis consisting of n vectors. We'll call them b sub 1 through b sub n. And suppose we know what t does to each of these vectors. Let's say it turns b sub i into b sub i prime, which itself will be a linear combination of these basis vectors. So we know how t acts on the basis vectors. Does that give us enough information to know what t will do to an arbitrary vector in the space, say v? So because v is in the space, we can express it as a linear combination of these basis vectors. So it'll be something like alpha 1 times b1 plus alpha 2 times b2 all the way up to alpha n times bn. Because t is a linear operator, we actually have enough information now to know what vector it'll transform this vector v into. We know how to express v as a linear combination of the basis vectors b and we know that we can apply the linear transformation t to each of these basis vectors individually to find out what it does to v as a whole. So we know it'll just transform the b's into these b primes. And so when it acts on v, we'll get alpha 1 times b1 prime plus alpha 2 times b2 prime all the way up to alpha n times bn prime. And this is the vector that v transforms into after being operated on by t. Since v was an arbitrary vector in the space, we know how t will transform any vector in this vector space just by knowing how t transforms the basis vectors. This is why this property of linearity is so important. 